Hello and welcome to the BMET virtual open event. We'll take you on a journey to explore the world of BMET and the courses we on offer at the college. My name is Jimmy and some of you might recognise me from attending events in your school to promote the courses we have on offer across our three colleges, which are Matthew Barton College, James Watt College and Sutton Coldfield College. Just before we start guys, if you have any hearing impairments or learning difficulties, I would like to get a transcript of today's event please email ask at bmet.ac.uk because we don't want you to miss a thing. This morning you'll hear from some of our subject specialists who will tell you more about the courses on offer here at Matthew Barton College in subject areas such as childcare, horticulture, health and social care, medical and science. If you have any questions for us today guys, I'd like them to be answered, please use our Q&A function just beneath my screen below. Today we've got Sarah Peter, Heidi, Susan, and Neelam, and the team who will answer all the questions as we can. First up, we're going to pass over to Sarah for the first part of the event. Over to you, Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, my name is Sarah Biddlestone. I'm the Department Manager for Early Years and Education. Uh, we have a range of different courses that are available um, depending on your GCSE results uh, and also your English and Math um, skills as well. Uh, we have level one to level two and level three courses available, uh, which uh, predominantly look at the early years practitioner and level two and level three will also give you a license to practice. These jobs can offer you uh, a range of opportunities in school nurseries, in receptions, um, learning support, um, also special educational needs, uh, learning support also, uh, and also teaching assistant. Um, also, our courses provide, uh, the Level 3 will provide you with the opportunity uh, to progress onto university if that is something that you would like to consider. Um, some people have also progressed into primary education. Could you go on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, I'm going to go through these quite quickly. Uh, if you would like some further information, if you email the um, ask uh, web address, um, email address, we'll be able to provide you with the breakdown of the different elements of the courses. Uh, we'll be looking at GCSE results um, for grade, you need to grade two uh, for level one um, in English and maths, grade three for level two, and grade four for um, the uh, level three. Um, could you go on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, as I previously said, the level two diploma um, is very much raised around giving you a license to practice. So that means that you, at the end of your level two qualification, you can either progress onto level three or you can choose to go on to, into employment at a level two early years practitioner. Uh, this will mean that you'll be in placement for uh, one day a week uh, and you will also um, be assessed in the workplace as well as your assignment. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, and this is also the level three. So as you can see, there's a lot more units here. So we study some units in, in year one and then some units in year two, which then you could progress to either employment or into HE. For those of you who are over the age of 19, we also have a range of courses that are available. So we have access to education for those people who are interested to go into primary education, uh, into HE. And we also have um, level one and level two for the early years practitioner. And we also have level one, two and three available for people who want to go into support teaching and learning. If you do have any further questions, if you just send them through to uh, ask today, or if you send them through to the email address and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, now over to uh, Horticulture. Hi. So BMET offers a wide range of horticultural courses at our study centre at the Birmingham Botanic Gardens. And this allows us to give real life work experience in a historic garden, which is an offer that you can't get at any other colleges in the local area. We offer part-time and full-time courses ranging from level two uh, and level one um, and it develops your wide range of horticultural skills that allow you to travel go into industry in the aspects of all horticulture including sports turf, pests and diseases and various other things. Um, it depends on your GCSE and maths and English results and your other education but we have a course that's available for you in horticulture so why not come and see us and have a chat with us about the prospects within that there is a wide number of jobs available within horticulture and they are currently recruiting if you look online you can see lots of job opportunities so why not take the chance to come and take part in our horticulture program 
Thanks very much, and I'll pass you over to Dental Technology now. Okay. You got your mic mute, mate? We're just gonna get your mic mute, there we go. Good morning, my name's Simon, a Dental Technology Instructor. In dental technology, we construct all the restorations that a dentist will prescribe. So we'll be dealing with full arch rehabilitations to single tooth restorations and also orthodontics. You, um, if you're interested in uh, working with materials and you like making things, you enjoy making things, then it would be an ideal uh, course for yourselves. Um, we make things primarily by hand. We also have CAD CAM systems, so we can use computer aided design. Um, but what uh, fundamentally, everything is still hand finished. Um, next slide, please. We have a range of courses. Our uh, GDC registrant course begins at level three. So at uh, level three, you can become GDC registered. We are likely to have five GCSEs, including maths, English, and science. Um, it's a, and a two, it's a two year program. I'd like to hand you over to my colleague, Heidi, in dental nursing. Next slide, please. Hi, my name is Heidi Creswell, and I'm course tutor for the dental nurse programs. Um, as a dental nurse trainee, you'll be learning an extensive variety of instruments used within practice and what different treatments they may be used for, including how to zone um, to prevent cross-contamination. You'll become familiar with different materials that are used throughout and needed for all treatment. Dental nurses work closely with dentists and all members of the team, including hygienists and therapists, and must have good people skills be a good communicator, calm, organized, empathetic, friendly, and caring. The dental nurse apprenticeship is designed for people who work in a dental practice and wish to start a career in the dental field. The course is 18 months and starts on the first day of employment. We have four exams, a portfolio of evidence, and you'll need to pass your endpoint assessment to complete the apprenticeship. To meet the entry requirements, you'll need a minimum of GCSE, maths and English at grade four or above, or functional skills level two. Once you're qualified, you'll then be able to experience a full range of exciting opportunities, which include things like radiography, oral health education, hygiene therapy. Um, I would now like to pass you on to Pete to discuss the pharmacy. Thank you. Uh, so, we offer a pharmacy apprenticeship and the first part of the course is at level two and this is a pharmacy assistant and um, this gives you the skills of working in a pharmacy closely with customers and the pharmacy team and allows you to get the basics together for working in a pharmacy. It's a, an apprenticeship so you do need an employer and we will support you with finding an employer for you to complete your apprenticeship with. Um, your training will start on the first day you start employment with your employer and you'll come to college one day a week and it will run for up to 15 months. There is a portfolio of evidence and you are supported in the workplace by a large team of assessors who come out and observe you and support you with developing your skills within the workplace and also there is some theory tests that you take at the college which you study for one day a week. You will be paid for your apprenticeship for the time that you work and that includes the time that you come to college which you'll be released for. In order to gain access to our apprenticeship you must have uh, grade four or C or level two functional skills at maths and English but we do offer an option of studying science first if you haven't got these qualifications to access our pharmacy level two apprenticeship. The progression from pharmacy uh, level two is on to our level three technician course, which is a registrable qualification with the pharmaceutical council and allow you to practice in a pharmacy um, and access a wide range of jobs. If you have anything else that you want to know about it, please feel free to ask questions at the end. Thank you. I'd now like to pass over to science. Thank you, Pete. 
Welcome to the Science Department. I'm Susan Chapritu, the Department Manager of Science. At Matthew Bolton, we offer a range of courses in applied science, which will enable you to progress to various employment in the science industry, uh, like agriculture, pure science, health sector, research, and teaching. Next slide, please. Thank you. You can enroll onto our different levels of science courses based on the qualifications you have in terms of GCSE English, Maths, and Science. Our, if you do not have any formal qualification, you will be able to join our one-year level one program. Our level two is also a one-year program and the entry requirement is four GCSEs, including Science, English, and Maths. If, you're, if you have five GCSEs with grade fours, then you will be able to join our highest science qualification, which is a level three extended diploma. The assessment for level two and level three is through external exams and internal assessment based on theoretical and practical work, which is graded at pass, merit, and distinction. Thank you for listening and over to Neelam for help and social care. Hello, welcome everybody to our open day. Um, my name is Neelam Hussain and I'm the Department Manager for Health and Social Care over at Matthew Bolton. Um, so we um, offer a range of um, courses here at Matthew Bolton, hopefully to suit some of your needs. Uh, we initially run a level two in health and social care and also a level three in health and social care as well. Um, can we just quickly go on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the level two health and social care is a one year quality, a one year course. Um, and in order to um, the entry requirements for this course is you will need um, GCSEs at grade um, three, um, mainly at grade three in maths, English and science. So there's a bit of a typo on there. Um, the units we study vary again, and it depends on because health and social care is so diverse. You've you've got your health sector and then also you've got your social sector so we have tried to cater our units based on sort of the needs that students want to progress on to um we have got two exams on this qualification and then the rest of this sort of assignments units are internally assessed on successful completion of the level two hopefully a lot of our learners do tend to progress onto our level three so could we please move on to the next slide thank you the Level 3 National Foundation Diploma is still a one-year qualification. Um, hopefully, once you've completed it, you will be able to then move on to the year two part of the extended diploma. Um, again, we have a variation of units. You will need at least five GCSEs at grade four and above in maths, English and science. Um, and we also have a placement element in our qualifications as well, simply giving students the chance to sort of work in, in the real life setting so that they can really make that decision as to whether this is something that they do want to do and hopefully sort of setting you aside from other applications when you go to um, university. Um, can you move on to the next slide, please? Should be, okay, can you, can you just go back on one second? Um, just to touch base as well, um, we also run a um, level three health science qualification as well. Um, it's very similar to the level three health and social care. However, it's more for students who want to go down sort of the science route. So like Susan spoke before, as you probably could see that based on our progression destinations, a lot of our courses tend to overlap. Um, so we are working very closely with universities to ensure that there's no gap between them. Um, so, and, and that will enable students to gain the skills that they need for health as well as sort of science, which is why we've emphasized the science course as well. Um, if you are 19 plus, we do also run the access courses um, in health and social care as well as um, social science. So again, if you need any further information, please email ask at bmet.ac.uk and hopefully they should be able to provide you with um, further information. Um, hopefully we, we will see you in September. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Really enjoyed that. So back over to myself. We're now going to go on to the live Q&A part. Here we go. So we had loads of questions coming in, guys. We're going to get them answered to you, to you now. Just going to fire off with the first question. First question is... Are these courses that we've talked about today, is there any access courses available for that? I know you just mentioned Neelam just then, 
health and social care access courses, sorry, but is there any further access courses for any of the other subjects that we talked about earlier? Who can answer that one for us? Or maybe be a mixture of people who could answer that one for us. The court is yours, guys. The court is yours. Is that you, Susan, first I can see? Yes, um, we do have access course in science. It's a one year program. It's uh, aimed at 19 plus students. And we teach physics, chemistry, biology, and maths units. And it can lead them to uh, progression to any of the science degree courses in the university. Thank you. We also, uh, education, you have to be, uh, access is for 19 plus. We have um, access to education if people want to go into uh, teaching. Uh, you do have to, on entry, you need to have a GCSE grade C or grade four in English and maths due to the, um, uh, the HE requirements. Thank you very much. We're going to pass over to myself. Where have I gone? I can see myself. Three, two, one. Back on the screen. There we go. Let's have a look. Okay, next question, guys. Next question. Let's have a look. We're scrolling up the list now. I've got loads of questions coming in. We've actually got one about financial support. So how do I get financial support at BMET College? So a little bit different to what we've been talking about today, but how do I get financial support? Could someone from our student, student experience or student services team answer that one for us? Hiya, Dr. Jimmy, Donald Lancer. There we go. So, hiya. So if you need financial support, we do offer um, a bursary support fund. So what we ask students to do is during like the August period after your enrolment, you'll be sent out some information about how you can actually apply online. And all it is is that you simply um, pop your information on there, um, put down what household income you have and provide that evidence. You submit it. And us such student services will then kind of assess it to see if you're eligible for bursary support. The thresholds that we have for 16 to 18 and um, people who have an EHCP plan, um, is the threshold is 25,000. It's the same if you're doing an advanced learner loan as well, the threshold is 25,000. So, and if you're 19 plus, the threshold is 21,000. So generally, if your household income is below those levels, you, in theory, should be able or eligible for bursary support. Back to you, Jimmy. Thanks, Donna. Thank you very much. I'm going to find myself again on the list. There I am, back on the screen. Yeah. Right, guys, next question then. Next question, loads coming in. I have to scroll back up to the top. Here we go. Is there any work experience for the courses that's on offer for dental technology? It's a good question, that is. Who can take that one for us? Dental technology, is there work experience available? Hello, yes, there is a mandatory requirement for um, the learner to spend some time in the dental laboratory. So that's, that's linked to both the first year and the second year um, on the course. And that's really important to be in the dental laboratory, be in that environment and gain experience in, in the workplace where you'll be dealing with uh, live cases um, and your uh, problem solving skills will be um, developed. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, here I am on the screen. There we go. Right, guys, next question. Let's have a look. Scroll back up to the top. I'll keep scrolling down to the bottom here. So, guys, how many days a week then is all of our courses? So, health and social care, is it, is it two days a week? Is it four days a week? Is it on Sunday? Um, it, it, it depends. So, um, the 16 to 18 predominantly, it is four days, three to four days. Um, and then one of the days is allocated to placement. Um, with access, again, it varies. So because it's sort of the different needs of the students, especially being adults, we do have a two day program, um, but we also will have um, a sort of three to four day as well, because some of them may need to retake their GCSEs as well. So it's, it entirely depends on the student, to be honest. Um, but if any student has a particular query, then I suggest they just send us an email and then we can obviously sort of let them know from there. Thanks, Neelam. Thank you very much. Is anyone else want to just pop their information as well for their curriculum area on top of that as well? Um, I'll tell that for early years. So we've, um, we have to, uh, the level one, um, we do a work, one week uh, work experience. Uh, for the level two and the level three, um, because you get licensed to practice, the placement element is mandatory. Uh, we find the placement for you. Um, so we have a placement officer in place, so you haven't got to worry about that. Um, and we will also do a DBS, um, which is a criminal clearance check, which also the college uh, pays for as well. Uh, for the access provision, you do one day a week. Thank you very much. 
Right, then back over to myself. Let's get the next question in. The next question is, do you have to find an employer to start the pharmacy apprenticeship? Do you have to, you have to find yourself an employer to start the pharmacy apprenticeship? Who can this one go over to, guys? Over to you, Pete. Hiya, I'm, I'm Lynn from the pharmacy team. Um, you, you can find your own employer. That would be great, but you don't have to do that. Um, you can give us your information, which um, we'll need to know what your qualifications are, any previous experience that you have. We'll take all that information. We'll put that to our business development team and put you into the talent pool, and then we will find you an employer from there. Thanks very much. Thanks, Lynn. So I'm going to go back over to myself. Next question then, guys. Next question. Let's have a look. Next question's coming in. Pop the video back onto myself. There we go. Loads of boxes open here on my screen. So the next question then is, let's have a look. There we go. It's going back up to the top. So guys, in terms of entry requirements then, what is the entry requirements for our level three courses across the board? Health and social care. Someone wants to answer um, Mainly, um, five GCSEs, grade four and above in maths, English and science for our level three. Um, we do take some students on, and again, it's on exception, sort of with a retake in maths at a grade three um, for health and social care. So where they will do the level three, but then they will also be uh, supported with completing their maths GCSE alongside as well. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to pop in and, and say their level three for me? Oh. For our science courses, we have two streams of level three program. One is a diploma in science and the second one is extended diploma in science. So for extended diploma in science, we look for at least four GCSEs with grade four and above, including English, maths and science. We prefer double science for extended diploma students. For our diploma level, if any student has missed their GCSE English or maths, they can do alongside a lower qualification in science and complete their GCC English and maths. So we have two streams of level three program for science schools. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass back to myself. Is everyone answered guys? I'm just conscious now we've had health and social care answer. We've had a science answer now. Yeah, I'll, I'll take early years. Um, so for early years, um, we similar to health and social care. Um, we don't, um, predominantly ask for um, the science. Um, however, if do people, people want to go into primary education um, and want to be a primary school teacher, then uh, the universities will ask for GCSE in science. So it depends on what you're interested in and what your, your progression routes are and what you, you're looking to do for employment. Thank you very much. For the pharmacy courses, um, because it's an apprenticeship, you have to access the level two apprenticeship first and then move on to the level three apprenticeship and to gain access to the level three apprenticeship you must have your maths and english at c grade and you also must have a c or a four at science but we can offer those alongside depending on your individual cases so just talk to us and we'll be able to advise you on what you need thanks pete thanks very much okay so next question guys is is there any university level courses for dental technology and if so what are the entry requirements Yes, there is a level five foundation degree available for dental technology and the entry requirements are a level three qualification, preferably in science, um, alongside English and maths um, at grade four and above at level two. Uh, what we do find is the level three qualification provides a good standing and a good foundation for uh, progression into the level five qualification. Thanks, Simon. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. Back to myself. Let's get some more questions in. We are fast running out of time. We've got five minutes left. Let's get some more questions answered to you guys as well. Question for horticulture then. Uh, how do you get to uh, the actual gardens? Is, is there an easy route to get to the gardens? Is it quite far away? Um, our Botanic Garden Study Centre is based at Birmingham Botanic Gardens, which is in Edge Baston. It's about a 10 minute ride from the centre of Birmingham on the bus. Um, half an hour's walk from Matthew Bolton campus. You can cycle. Um, there's plenty of bus routes because it's just off the main routes in Birmingham. And it's, it's in Edge Baston. So it's not far away and we'll support you with getting there and tell you how to get there and everything. It's quite a nice centre. So if you look at the Birmingham Botanic Gardens, it's right. It's in their grounds. 
Fantastic, Peter. Thank you very much for that. Back to myself. So let's go up to the top then. Uh, what if I don't receive expected grades due to COVID-19 this year? That's a really good question. I think that's going to be to everyone that is. So what if I don't receive expected grades to COVID-19 this year? Is that going to affect the entry requirements possibly? Or are, we, are we going to sort of be easier or relaxed? On how to, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're all, as, as managers, we are having a look at other alternatives. And I'm sure the other managers will chip in on this as well. But um, I think we are aware of the current situation. Of course we are. Um, and... It is ultimately we need to put students on the right course as well. So yes, we you know under the current climate it's not great, um, but you know we still can't put students on. For example, if they're not working at that particular level, then we wouldn't really be putting them on a higher grade. Um, so we've got internal assessments which we can get completed. Things like initial assessments, for example. Um, which we have used in the past to, de to determine whether that student's going to be suitable for a particular level. Um, I always say that sort of, you know, support students from sort of a lower level and then work their way top from, from above. Um, and, you know, so I think each individual case will be looked at and, you know, we are going to be sensitive to the situation and hopefully we will be able to get them on onto the correct course and the right course for them as well. Thanks, Neil. I'm just going to have to just cut in there because guys, we are fast running out of time. We've got three minutes left. A few more things just to get through, so I'm going to now finish up the Q&A. So guys, if you've got any more questions to get into us, please get us on the ask at bmet.ac.uk and get all your questions in there. We'll get them answered to you as soon as possible. Okay, folks, just going to move on. Here we go. So guys, at college, then, there's a whole student experience team who are on hand here to help you, to support you throughout the college. If you need financial support, we'd like to see the college counsellor or mentor. We would like further research help in the, the Learning Resource Centre. It's called the LIC. We are here to help every step of the way. If you want to get involved with activities outside the classroom, each college has a variety of uh, activities on offer. You can speak to our student experience offer when you join the college to find out more information. So guys, if you want to find out what's on offer across the wider BMET networks, not just at Matthew Barton, but also at Sutton Carlfield College and James Watt College, here you can see on the screen a variety of courses on offer you can get to. Again, pop online guys and apply online at bmet.ac.uk to find out more information. So guys, as you guys can't visit Matthew Barton College at the moment, we thought we'd bring the college right to your doorstep. Whether you're in your bedroom, in the bathroom, you're outside in the garden maybe, we're going to show you Matthew Barton now and what the ins and outs are of the college. Enjoy. There we are, folks. So, thank, guys, thank you very much for joining us today. If you're collecting your grades this summer or if you already have them grades, head over to our college website again on bmet.ac.uk, as you guys can see on the screen, to apply for a place at college this September. You'll be given a conditional offer and being sent more information on how to enrol closer to the time. From all the team here at BMET today, we hope you enjoyed this session and we look forward to welcoming you back for more. Thank you. <laughs>